Hey guys, Lou here. So, started playing Baccarat back in October. Really enjoy the game. Uh, and now I've been looking at, you know, different ways of making money with it. So, as far as building bankroll, building wealth, uh, there's a little magical thing in the financial world called compound interest, right? So, with that, basically you take your original investment, whatever you earned, and you reinvest it the next day or the next session, however you want to put it. I consider a session in Baccarat as a day, all right? So if I could play five sessions, I'm sorry, if I could play five shoes a day, that's five days. Now, let me just walk you through this really, really quick. Um... There we go. Sorry about that. I thought I had a different screen up. So if we take a $700 investment and we add 10% to that every day. So 10% of 700 is $70, right? Easy enough. We do that for two months, seven days a week. Now this is 10% per day. You don't have to do five shoes a day. Just earn 10% per day over however many shoes it takes you. And in two months, you come out with $213,000. Fun, right? Now, if we take that, drop it to 2%, but we do it over one year, comes out to $964,000. So, basically, you're looking at 365 sessions. Or shoes, if you will. You have to earn 2% per shoe. So, you do that. Let's say you do five shoes a day, right? That's that's five days per day, seven days a week. That's 35 days a week. You're looking at 12 weeks to get to $964,000. Okay, that's it for the math lesson. Now, let's get to here. So... There was, or there is, a guy on YouTube, Andre B. And he's one of the people I follow. And I find a lot of inspiration from him and his Baccarat strategies. So I'm going to take some of his strategies. And I'm also going to take strategies from Cheetos Baccarat, the Baccologist, um, Mr. Raphael, and to a degree, the guy that everybody loves to hate, Christopher Mitchell. Now... I don't subscribe to Christopher Mitchell. I've never paid for any of his systems. His free videos he has on YouTube, I find um, inspirational. Okay, but I understand what his system is. Um, it's a Martingale system. It's a hit and run system. I don't like his system, but I enjoy his energy, if you will. Okay, now, that being said, Andre B. and I had a discussion about the Wizard of Odds. And that discussion was that it's pretty easy to beat. And he says it's not. Now, here at the house, I have my own shoe, eight decks. I have my own chips. And I practice at my dining room table. I practice money management, bet strategies, things like that. And I've had some success and I've had some failures, as everybody has. You know, if, if it was an easy game, nobody would have it in their casinos. You know, you walk into the casino, they would hand you $10,000 and you would turn around and walk out. So like anything else in life, you got to work for it. Now, you know, you have work hard or work smart. That being said, let's go ahead and jump into this. So with Andre B, his system consists of, well, I shouldn't say system, his methods. You know, he doesn't sell anything. You know, he, he's, he's a good guy. I like him a lot. Um, he uses a majority six. Uh, he uses second position, and he uses um, what's called a sniper. So I'm going to break that down for you real quick. Um, majority six is when you look at the bead road. I'm sorry, when you look at the bead plate, which is in the top left of the screen. Uh, you see that there's columns of six. So you wait for two in a row to win, and whatever that majority is for that column. That's what you bet for the rest of the column. Simple enough, right? Second position is if we look at the next grid underneath it, um, this is where the results are displayed 
uh, up and down, left to right, depending on if it's bank or a player. Okay. Uh, every time one hits, you bet that it's going to hit again. So if banker comes out, you're going to bet that banker comes out. The other uh, method that he uses is what's called sniper. So you wait for three results in a row. And with those three results, um, you start betting against the opposite. Simple enough. So let me see if I can walk you through this really, really quick. Um, okay. So let me bring up my scoreboard. Let's just run through this really, really quick. All right. So first card comes, uh, first hand is played, player comes out. So looking um, at the top left of the screen, you see a blue circle. That's player. Second position means that we're going to bet for player to come out. And we would have had a win there. Okay. Easy enough. Now, sniper. Let's say three bankers come out. We're going to start betting player. All right. And player comes out. Okay, groovy. Now we're going to bet second position again. And uh, let's say we miss. Now his method is to take another shot at it. My experience with this game is that you got about a 30% chance of it, ha of it hitting again, but a 60% chance of it hitting the first time after that three, if that makes sense. Now, majority six. Uh, looking at the lower right of the screen, you'll see PP, BBB, P, and then the next row starts B, right? So let's say banker comes out again. Well, that's the majority of this column. So then we start betting this column, all right? Um... Banker comes out, and we get a win. Simple enough, right? Let the column finish. Doesn't matter what the results are. Who cares? Okay. Um, you can either play by the column, get one win per column. And if you're going to do that, I highly suggest using a Martingale. <clears throat> but if you're a high-action player, you like to bet every hand, but you don't like guessing. Uh, Andre, the bacologist, Mr. Raphael, they've made, they've created methods that sort of help choose what your decisions are going to be. And they're all very helpful. Uh, I have nothing bad to say about any of these people. Uh, again, I, I draw inspiration from all of them. I learn from everybody. So getting back to my story. So Andre B said that the Wizard of Odds is not easy to beat. And I tell him that it is. I can beat it 8 out of 10 times, 9 out of 10 times. So let's put this into practice, shall we? All right. So let's go back to the wizard. So we have a brand new shoe. We have a $10,000 balance. Um, we're starting with $700. Now, the amount you have is inconsequential. What matters is the 10% of whatever it is that you're starting with. Okay, so you could have... 700, 500, 10,000, 100,000, uh, it doesn't matter. What matters is the percentage. Okay, so here we have banker one. Okay, now you don't want to use your first win as the start of your majority six. Okay, uh, what we are going to do is start with second position. All right, so in this case, we're going to put $5 on banker. Hey, amazingly, banker wins, right? So now we have two in a row for majority six. And we also have, you know, two in a row that banker won. Now, I typically don't play the twos unless I'm looking to play what's called the terrible twos or what I call the terrific twos. And I like playing the terrific twos because uh, you can get a really long pattern going and just make a boatload of money on it. But for the purposes of this video, let's skip the twos, Okay. Um, let's try doing majority six. Let's see what happens. Okay, player wins. Now, you can keep going to try to get your majority, um, to get Banker to hit again. 
I find it's easier to just kind of follow the winner. All right, so we're going to uh, increase our bet. Oh, by the way, uh, money management. I'm using what's called foolproof money management. So basically what that is is that every time I win or lose, I will add one unit. In this case, I'm starting with $5 units. So your first bet, yes, that's a martingale. But your second bet, let's say with five, or your third bet batter, third bet rather, with the foolproof is that instead of going to $20, it's only going to be $15. And then instead of $40 on a martingale, you would be at $20. Okay, I hope that makes sense. So let's see if player comes out again. Of course it does not. So now majority six would have won here. So you see, it's not so much easy to make a decision. You're playing the odds of probability. So that's okay. This is a perfect example for me to show how to recover. All right, so banker won, so we're going to go for the uh, second position on banker. Of course, player wins, so it looks like it's starting to go into a chop. So let's do 20 on banker. Tie. Okay, so we're just about back even. So I'm going to continue playing the chop here. All right, we have no majority. We have no second position. So let's see what happens if we can get this to chop. There we go. Now we're $20 in profit. See how easy that works? Now, I drop back down to my base bet. We see we have a player. So we're gonna go banker. Okay, so we got that. Same thing, we're gonna look. We have no majority. I'm sorry, we have a majority but not two in a row. Okay, we're still we're still on a chop here. So why not play the chop? It's like playing a streak. You know, you can only lose once. And there we go. All right, so we have a two. So no bet here. Let's see which way the shoe wants to go. Okay, so we got three in a row for banker. So this is where we're going to do our sniper. All right, which means I'm just going to place a bet on... Uh, player. So I think I left off at $10. No, it was $5. This is $10. Okay, so that didn't win. So now that tells me that banker may want to go on a run. So let's do 15 on banker, see what that does. There we go. So now we're back up to where we sort of left off before. So we'll drop back down to our $5. Banker wins again. Awesome. At this point, I would start increasing my bets, but the odds of probability of a tail going past six go up exponentially. Uh, so we're just gonna stay conservative here and we're gonna go, it's a good thing I didn't increase my bet. Okay, so player missed, so I'm gonna go for second position on player. Got that one. All right. Now, that's two in a row for banker. No majority. So, because it's a two, I'm going to skip it. Banker wins. And at this point, now I'm going to start increasing my bets. So, we're going to go to $10 on banker. That missed. We're going to do 20 on player for the second position. Got that. Uh, we got two in a row, and we have a player majority, so I don't think it's going to hit, but let's put 10 on player just to play the system. Nope. So we got a banker. Now there's no majority in the column. All right. So what we do have is a pattern forming. So if you look after the, the banker streak, you have two players, a banker, two players, a banker. Um, we can do second position. I'm going to go for a uh, player here. Okay. 
And that is why you follow a system. Make sense to everybody? If you try to guess, I promise you this game will burn you. So now we have terrible twos or terrific twos starting here. Um, again, two in a row. I'm not going to touch it. Okay, banker wins. So now we have three in a row for banker. So now we'll do our sniper. So we're going to go $30 on player. Got that. Uh, we'll do second position on player for 10. Nope. Let's do second position on banker. Nope. And let's see. We don't have a majority six. So we'll just play the chop here. Okay, there you go. Uh, so we're going to do the chop one more time on player. Got that one. And back to banker. Let's just take a look. No majority. So part of the game is being able to read the shoe, right? If you were to try to do second position on, on this chop that was here, at this point, I would be down what? 10, 20, 30, 40, so 40, 30, 70, 100 bucks. So you just sort of have to read the shoe, feel it out. Um, but you gotta remember, 50% of a shoe is going to be a chop. All right, so that's the math of the game. That's all there is to it. 25% of the game is going to be twos, and then the remaining 12.5% and 12.5% is going to be split up between threes and more than three. All right, that's just the science, the, the math behind the game. So, again, we have no majority, two in a row, so we're just going to take a free hand here. Player one again, so we have three players, so now we'll do banker. Nope, so now let's try playing the streak for player. Got that. And we'll do one more on player. <clears throat> ah, I forgot to put my bet. Oh, good thing I didn't. Okay. No biggie. Um, okay, so second position on banker. Got that. We're $10 away from our goal. We got two in a row. No majority. So we take a free hand here. We got a player. Um, let's do second position on player. And there we go. <clears throat> so we were looking for 10% of 700. That's $770. So in... Less than 40 hands, okay, which is, uh, well, a typical shoe is about 70 hands. So, you know, a little over half the shoe. We've hit our goal. We're done. We're going out to the bar, and we're going to relax and wait for a new shoe to start. That, hopefully, is a good overview of how these systems work. And I'm actually making this video specifically for Andre B., um, to show him how I put his systems into use for me. Okay, now I am by no means an instructor. I am by no means a system seller, system designer. I am just a guy that likes to play this game and make some money at it. All right. Uh, but I just wanted to prove that, you know, it's a fairly, you know, Wizard of Odds is fairly easy to play. Uh, easy to beat, rather, you know, even with his systems. So, you know, take that for what you will. Uh, again, I'm really making this just for him, but if you found something useful out of here, uh, you know, give it a like if you want to subscribe. I don't know how many more videos of these I'm going to be doing, but uh, I just did this for this one guy. I don't know. Good luck to everybody. Get out there, have fun, make money, get paid. I love when I have calls interrupting me. I forgot to put my phone on airplane mode. <laughs> well, I'm not doing this again. So, 
Um, all right, guys. Take care.